respected chairpersons, uh, enlightened uh, audience, good morning. Uh, here I present uh, a lipidology case. It's actually a management of uh, lipids in a patient with coronary disease. Here we present the case. A 60-year-old gentleman come for a follow-up visit. He is hypertensive for last 10 years, type 2 diabetic for last 15 years. And his past history reveals that he sustained an anterior ST elevation MI treated with drug eluting stent to proximal LED two years back. He is currently on these drugs, aspirin, bisoprolol and perintopril for his hypertension management and metformin and empagliflozin for diabetes management, which are well controlled. And he is on atrovastatin 40 milligram OD for his diabetic management. He admits that he could not follow the heart healthy dietary pattern and he does not perform any moderate intensity physical activity. He, his BMI is 27 and his waist circumference is 102. That is abdominal obesity is there. Other physical findings are unremarkable. His current lipid profile is this. Total cholesterol is 159, LDL 90, HDL 30, and TG is 195. So our question is which of the following is the most important step for his further lipid management? No change in the current treatment, increase in the dose of atrovastatin, start EGTMIPE, or lifestyle advice will be sufficient. The answer will be clear as we proceed. So let us uh, actually review some guideline aspects, guideline input for the management of this case. Three questions we need to answer before uh, starting the LDL management of this patient. Number one question, what is the risk category of this patient? And what is the LDL goal according to the risk category? And which LDL lowering treatment or treatment combinations should we prescribe? The risk category of our patient is he has got CV, uh, uh, MI and has coronary revascularization. So, so the risk category is he is of very high risk. And for this very high risk category, our goal is at least 50% or more uh, cholesterol reduction, LDL reduction from the baseline. In addition, he or she he must reduce the cholesterol level up to 55 or low because lower is better according to ESC guideline. And the third question is which LDL warning treatment should be prescribed? We must start with statin and should update it to maximally tolerated statin. If the goal is not achieved, ezetimibe is added. And even then, if the goal is not achieved, we should prescribe PCSK9 inhibitor according to the 2019 uh, 2019 ESC guideline. So what we have done in this particular case, we have actually uh, uh, doubled the atrovastatin dose from 40 milligram OD to 80 milligram daily. And the starting LDL cholesterol was 90 milligram per DL. After eight weeks, uh, his LDL uh, got down to 82 milligram per DL, but the patient developed intolerable myalgia. So the dose of atrovastatin was lowered to 40 milligram OD and EGTMIPE was added. After eight weeks, the LDL has gone down to 66 milligram per DL. Uh, myalgia was subsided, but we noticed that the patient did not achieve the LDL goal even with the combination of atrovastatin and EGTMIPE 10 milligram OD because we have an LDL cholesterol uh, 66. We need to go to 55 or below. So this is the scenario, practical scenario in our practice that we cannot achieve the target level either by uh, physician inertia or non adherence on the type on the part of the patient or we are not using the combination drug therapy in our uh, actually private in our practice here another thing is noted that when we double the dose of statin there is uh, only 8% reduction this is quite natural because we know every doubling of the statin reduces only 6% of the LDL cholesterol. And the addition of EGTMIPE reduces about 20% of the LDL cholesterol on the top of statin. And in our case, the reduction was 20%. So what you can do further to reduce the cholesterol? We can use PCSK9 inhibitor, but it is not available in our country. We can use bempedoic acid. Actually, this is still not guideline recommended. And we can also do uh, actually, uh, with, uh, we can lifestyle intervention, we can take the help of lifestyle intervention because every guideline reiter reiterates, repeatedly tells that uh, uh, 
the, it is the foundation of managing serum cholesterol and TG, but it is given in advice only format in our clinical practice, but it should be delivered in lifestyle counseling format. That's why it's not acting. Let us see what are the lifestyle intervention options to reduce the TG and LDL cholesterol, to lower TG and LDL cholesterol. According to the SC guideline, we can reduce the trans fat, dietary saturated fat, and increase dietary fiber. These are the magnitude of effect. You will see this is the plus plus, this 5 to 10 percent lowering of the cholesterol. We can remember that every doubling of the statin reduces only 6 percent of the cholesterol. But these individual, individually, this has got the five, uh, potential for reduction of 5 to 10 percent. And the combination of these things may have got prominent reduction in the, in the LDL cholesterol reduction. Further, uh, these are things we can, what we can do to reduce TG and LDL cholesterol. We can reduce the excessive body weight, reduce the dietary cholesterol, and habitual physical activity. Putting all these items together by lifestyle intervention technique, we can have actually, uh, uh, we can manage the LDL cholesterol to target. Proceeding on the triglyceride management, this patient has got initial triglyceride level 130, uh, 195, and later it was 176. So, hypertriglyceride is also a risk factor, uh, pre previous speaker has mentioned. So, we have, what we have done, actually, uh, what guidelines tells that the this range, 135 to 499, we can give uh, the eicosapentaenoic acid. And if the LDL is between 200, uh, more than 200, we can actually add phenofibrate, but the evidence is inferior. So our patient has uh, got bad lifestyle history, so we can actually have more to do to reduce the actually uh, uh, LDL cholesterol by lifestyle counseling. And we must remember this is actually health behavioral change advice only uh, therapy by advice only treatment doesn't work actually in this setting we must do it by lifestyle counseling so bottom line of this case is that this case scenario is common in cardiology practice but gap exists between guideline recommendation and clinical practice so ldl goal should be determined according to the risk category and statin should be the first line of management should be titrated to the maximally tolerated dose to reach the LDL goal, other non-statin drugs may need to be added, and hyperglass triglyceridemia should be uh, treated ap by appropriate TG lowering measures. And lifestyle intervention is underutilized in clinical practice. The task of lifestyle intervention is not simply by giving the advice. It is a structured process of making behavioral change in a patient and should be conducted by appropriately skilled team. Comprehensive and evidence-based lipid, lipid management is of utmost importance for the reduction of future events in this category of very high-risk patients. Thank you.